In our previous video, we started working through uh, an income statement. We worked through the variable costing income statement for this problem we've been working on. In this video, we're going to work through the absorption costing income statement. Then we're going to compare it to the variable costing income statement and figure out why it's different, where it's different, and, uh, and try to make some comments just on, on the differences between variable costing and absorption costing. That's going to be the focus of, of this video. So we did the variable costing income statement where we went sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin minus fixed expenses equals net income. That's, that's a traditional variable costing, also called a contribution format income statement. Sales minus variable expenses is contribution margin. Contribution margin minus fixed expenses is net income. And we've done that. This video, we're going to do an absorption costing income statement. That's like a normal income statement. That's the one you look up, you Google Microsoft income statement, you'll see one that looks like this. And it'll be sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin or gross profit gross margin minus our selling and administrative expenses equals net income. So let's go ahead and prepare our absorption costing income statement. You can see I got started in the last video and I said, oh, well, our sales are the same. doesn't matter which method, so we got our sales. Let's do our cost of goods sold, our COGS. And our cost of goods sold in this case, oops, is, well, it's $28 per unit. We calculated the cost per unit is $28 and we sold 57,000 units. So the cost of the goods that I sold, the cost of the units I sold, 28 times 57,000, 28 times 57,000, 1596, almost 1 1.6 million. One five nine six zero zero zero. So our sales, minus our cost of goods sold equals our gross margin. And let's do the math there. 2.85 million minus 1596000. Oh, oh, oh. 1.254 million. One million two hundred fifty-four thousand dollars is our gross margin. Now we're going to deduct our selling and administrative expenses. I think we just have selling costs in this company, but I'll use the proper heading. Selling and admin expenses. And let's see, what are our selling costs? We've got selling costs that are, oh, selling and admin. Variable selling uh, and admin is 180. Fixed selling and admin is 630. And actually, our very so pardon me, our variable selling and admin is $3 per unit sold. So let's do the math on that. So our variable is $3 a unit times the 57,000 units. Uh, and $3 times 57,000 is 171,000. Didn't have to cal use my calculator, it was just right over here. I just kind of copied the number over. Our fixed selling and admin is 630,000. I don't know why I called it selling before. It was selling and admin. So our total selling and admin, 630 plus 171, that looks to me like 801,000. That's our total selling and admin. So if I take 1254 minus 801, my gross margin minus my expenses, I get 453 as my profit, as my net income. Dollar sign on top, dollar sign on bottom, put a double underline under this thing, and we're good to go. So we've completed our absorption costing income statement. Looks like a normal income statement. Sales minus COGS is gross margin. Gross margin minus our selling and administrative expenses equals net income. Again, a more complex income statement would have income taxes, maybe discontinued operations, or other types of uh, complications. This one is just a, a very simple one. So I get to the bottom. I see my net income under absorption costing is 453, and I see under uh, variable it's 423. And I notice that I've got a difference there. I've got a 30k difference. I've got to think, 
Like, why did that happen? Why do I have a $30,000 difference? Well, let's look at the difference. And the, here, the, the difference can be explained for basically one reason. They treat manufacturing costs differently. So if I compare my cost of goods sold under absorption costing, which was 1596, COGS under absorption, which was 1596, which is the manufacturing costs under absorption costing, and I compare that to the manufacturing cost under variable costing, and we have variable manufacturing, 1026, fixed MOH of 600. So combine those two. Manufacturing cost under variable costing is, and again, it's just these two items, 1026 and 600,000. Those are the two manufacturing costs that are appearing on my income statement. So it's 1626. And I go, oh, wow, so I expensed 1626 on my variable costing income statement. I expensed only 1596 under my absorption costing income statement. The difference is 30 grand. And that's, that's what caused that difference in net income. So the difference is caused by the fact that under absorption costing, we include MOH under, uh, in our uh, cost of our product, in our cost of goods sold. Under variable costing, we expense all of the MOH. Maybe another way to think of it, and I like to think of it this way as well, is what's left over in my inventory? Well, we had, we said we had $3,000 worth of inventory left over, right? I, I made 60,000 units, I sold 57, I got 3,000 units of inventory left over. Well, under variable costing, that inventory's value is going to be 3,000 times 18, 3,000 times 18 is $54,000. Under fixed costing, that inventory is going to be 3,000 times 28. 3,000 times 28 is $84,000. So under absorption costing, I think it's called it fixed costing. Under absorption costing, my inventory value at the end of the year going into the next year is 84 grand. Under variable costing, it's only 54 grand. That means rather than expensing that extra 30,000, that's the difference, is the $30,000 expense, under absorption costing, you keep it in your inventory. Your inventory holds more value. So as inventory rises, absorption costing will have higher inventory values and higher profits. As inventory levels fall, the opposite is true. Okay. Let's leave this video series here. It's a complicated concept, and it, it takes a little bit to wrap your head around, so don't be shy to watch this video a few times. Feel free to ask questions beneath the video. I'll do my best to answer. It's a complicated topic for me, too, and so I hope the video was clear. Uh, but do your best. Practice, 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 and uh, hopefully you do get this. All right, that's it for the video series.